So we are going to listen to a seminar by um, Douglas Keller on the seasonal effects of atmospheric forcing on deep convection in the Gulf of Lyon. So Doug, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so I'm looking at how the Mistral and seasonal atmospheric forcing, um, how that affects deep convection in the Gulf of Lyon. And it's my PhD work, so um, presenting it here. Uh, so the, this project is actually part of a collaboration. Uh, LMD has a side with my advisors, uh, Philippe and Loma. And then there's a few people here uh, that I'm going to hopefully work with uh, moving on in the future. And uh, the other side of the project is in Israel at the Weizmann Institute. And my counterpart PhD st uh, student is, is Jonathan, and then with his advisor, Sheila. So basically uh, on their side, they're looking at the synoptic drivers of the Mistral. And then on our side, I'm looking at how the Mistral uh, influences deep convection in the Gulf of Lion. Um, and then with that, I'm using some NEMO simulations, and then we've made our own little simplified model uh, to kind of play around and understand it. Oops, there we go. So quick review of the Mistral. It's a strong northerly flow through the Willem Valley uh, and then it flows out over the Gulf of Lyon. And it's caused by a high pressure system over the continental Europe with a, a low in the Nigerian Sea the, or commonly known as the Genoa low. Uh, it's typically coupled with the uh, Tromontan, but it doesn't have to be. Um, particularly, uh, you know, it's, it's mainly just a northerly flow over the Gulf of Lyon. And Typically, it's a cooler air mass, so it, it tends to cool the surface. And how that can affect deep convection? Well, first was deep convection. Uh, open ocean deep convection is basically a convective system that reaches from the sea surface to the sea floor or near it. And essentially, it mixes the entire water column. And then because it mixes the entire water column, it moves around a lot of minerals and uh, nutrients so that marine wildlife can tends to explode after a deep convection event. And it also kind of aids in the general circulation of the Mediterranean Sea. And on the little graphic here on the right, uh, you see two different forms of dense water formation. Uh, so when deep convection convert, uh, occurs, it produces denser water, which then mixes the lower stratified layers. And so you have the open ocean convection uh, on the right side. And then on the left side, you see some self, uh, shelf convection and cascading. Both happen in the Gulf of Lyon, but I'm focused on the open ocean convection. Uh, so to kind of investigate this, uh, we decided to run two NEMO simulations and the NEMO, configura uh, NEMO MED 12 configuration. Uh, and then we forced it with some uh, WARF data sets uh, with the MED Cortex domain to basically play around with um, how the atmospheric forcing affects the, the deep convection, like I said before. And uh, the reason why there's two simulations is because with one simulation, the wharf variables, uh, three variables in particular, specific humidity, temperature, and wind speed are filtered over a, a month timeline uh, with moving mean window, essentially. And then what that filtering does essentially allows us to more or less remove the signature, the Mistral from the atmospheric variables. And so with one NEMO simulation, we are running it with the filtered atmospheric variables. And with the other simulation, we're running it with control. So we can kind of compare and see which one, uh, you know, how at least the time scale of the Mistral atmospheric forcing, how that fo those forcings uh, influence deep convection or not. And so with this uh, plot here, uh, the blue is the filtered and then the black is the control. And you can kind of see how it really removes a lot of the uh, extra variance when we do that moving mean. And so to look at deep convection, kind of uh, find a way to basically distinguish it, um, we're using the stratification index, which as the integral shows there, it's the brune weissel frequency integrated over the depth of the water column um, multiplied by the depth. So 
if we have a constant, if we assume a, basically a constant water column uh, with regards to Z, then uh, we get the following relation on the right side, which is just the depth squared over two times moon velocity frequency. And so what this allows us to do is easier track deep convection uh, per water column in our little domain. And so looking at the stratification index from the Nemo runs, uh, initially we can kind of see that there's, a, there's an area if you look at the third plot on the top row, um, you can see that there's an area in the control run, which is A, uh, the top row, that experiences deep convection because it has stratification index of zero or sometimes a little less, but obviously if it's less, it uh, fixes itself pretty quickly. So, uh, and we don't have that in the bottom row at all. Uh, but we can also see is that there's a, there's a hot spot of where this occurs, and then you have the shelf cascading uh, along the the shelf of uh, in the Gulf of Lion there before it hits the deeper waters where we get the open ocean convection. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm going to focus on the box labeled by uh, DC and pick a point in that, which is what's going to be 42.5, so 42 degrees north, five east, and look at how the uh, stratification index evolves over time. And that's in this plot. So <clears throat> the blue line here is the Nemo run with out, uh, so with the filtered war forcings. And so essentially we're calling that the seasonal run. Um, because it has, it doesn't, it just varies with the seasonal change of the atmosphere. Um, and the black run includes everything, it's the control. And uh, with that, we should see the effects of the Mistral. So, kind of the, the traditional look at deep convection is that it is, uh, there's a preconditioning period that is driven by the Mistral and the Gulf of Lion. And then at some point, there's a triggering event, the Mistral, that causes deep convection before it eventually restratifies. Uh, and that's the third section. So what we expect to see more or less is, is a pretty similar, uh, pretty stable seasonal, or basically a more or less constant seasonal uh, stratification index. And then the control would dip down to deep convection, which is zero, uh, zero for stratification index. And that would basically mean that the Mistral is the main driver, but that's not what we see. We actually see that there's a strong variance just from the seasonal changes alone. And so what that means is that you need both the Mistral and the seasonal changes to create deep convection. Um, and on these plots, what we can see is that uh, the, the green bars are mistral events. Uh, and I've labeled the green ones as the preconditioning mistral events, the ones that more or less aid in destratification. The red ones, uh, I haven't looked into those yet, but they actually may aid in restratification uh, after the deep convection event. And what I've done also is labeled the blue bars as kind of the ideal restratification times. And that will make sense in the next few slides. Uh, but basically, you can kind of see is that in the green bars here in the bottom plot, there is a, a pattern. Uh, these stratifies because the bottom plot is a difference between the control, which is the total mistral and seasonal uh, forcings, and just the seasonal forcing. So we're just seeing a difference in the bottom. And you can see there's a pattern uh, during the mistral events. So basically what we do next is to determine the model for that pattern. And doing that, I start off with the energy equation for incompressible flow. Um, I, if we follow along the, the, the arrows here, uh, on the right hand side, you have dq over dt 
and I replace that, which is the heating term, I just replace that with the heating uh, and the cooling from the atmosphere. I multiply it by gravity over uh, standard temperature to get buoyancy and then take the partial derivative with respect to Z to get the Brun-Weissel frequency. Uh, so the, now the equations determine the Brun-Weissel frequency. I, which you can see on the bottom there, uh, dn squared over dt equals f. And f is just a basically a convenient term that swallows up the atmospheric forcing. If we go over to the right-hand side, since we have two NEMO simulations, one that just varies the seasonal and then one varies in total, which is what we're calling here the just n squared, the Brun-Weissel frequency. Uh, the one denoted by sub s is just the seasonal part and the delta is just the part that's affected by the Mistral. So with the last plot, essentially, that would just be more or less what we see here in the bottom. And what we're doing is essentially changing it over into uh, from boon feisel frequency to stratification index, uh, which I'll do in a minute here. But just to kind of drive the point home, uh, the delta portion is what we're assuming is this, the portion that's primarily affected by the Mistral in terms of stratification. And so when we split that apart, we're and just focus on, and it's basically assuming that the entire response is a linear combination of the seasonal and the Mistral part. Uh, I break apart the that material derivative into the time partial derivative and then the evection terms. And then what I've done here is replace the evection term with a restoration term. Uh, essentially, because we look at um, if we kind of shift the seasonal over to the other side, we can see that on this top equation that uh, the delta force, the, basically the, the mistral forcing equals the total minus seasonal. And so essentially that's what this restoration term acts like is how the seasonal returns or how the control returns to seasonal or vice versa. And essentially what this restoration term represents is advection, and that's primarily swallowed into the coefficient, which is alpha. And then I've kept, I've separated the forcings into the forcings just for the mistral. Can I ask a um, question? Sorry. Yes. Um, where the, this alpha term, it depends on the seasonal stratification, no? Because there's a nonlinearity in the advection. How do you separate both, even though you have a nonlinear equation? Uh, so I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm not really separating it. I'm just removing and replacing. Um, I'm just saying that I'm just basically swapping in this proportional term to replace the nonlinear terms. So it, it's, I'm, I'm more of like simplifying it. I'm not really, um, the okay. Then, yeah. Does that make sense? An approximation here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So yeah, it's just an approximation. I'm just approximating the advection terms with the proportional uh, coefficient. And going on to the next part, uh, I multiply it by a depth squared over two. If you remember from the stratification index slide, if I assume a constant water column, which this essentially removes the advection. I have to basically assume out the adv uh, advection terms in the vertical that I can get the stratification index uh, from my little simple model here of, in the brun weissel frequency. If we further look at the Mistral in terms of like a, a pulse-like function, we're just on and off with the period uh, between events of delta tau and a duration of delta t, Right, time with a strength of uh, delta f, lowercase delta f, then we can solve that equation, that uh, differential equation, and get the result at the bottom. And essentially what I have at the bottom here is a portion for uh, a solution for during a mistral event and a solution for after. And essentially what we're looking at as a solution during will be the destratification phase and the solution after will be the restratification phase. And in addition to that, I've assumed basically a constant restoration coefficient. So more or less a constant effect 
of the approximation of vection per uh, section of the pulse function. And what basically it does is I can then look at how maybe the advection differs between uh, the destratification and the restratification phase. Um, and just in, it also gives us a more accurate result. So in order to get those restoration coefficients, what I've done is I've taken those ideal destratification phases, the ones that were special with like dots in the green bars for during a mistral event. And I've fitted basically a normalized version of that equation we just saw in the last uh, slide uh, to those destratification rates. And I've fitted a normalized, uh, normalized version of the equation after uh, with, a, with the ideal restratification events. And by doing this, I can get directly the uh, restoration coefficients as of the only unknown that's being fitted for in the normalized equations. And so what that results in is essentially like an ideal case, ideal uh, destratification, restratification event like this. So you have the mistral in the green and the restratification after the mistral in the blue. And then with the dotted lines basically being the portion that would be affected by the next event or, or something like that. And the values at the top are basically the, uh, the value you get from the re in terms of the restoration coefficient, alpha sub D, alpha sub A, again, from the re portion. I get the average forcing. So basically I've looked at uh, using those first two restoration coefficients. I've looked at how each um, mistral event has destratified uh, the water column and then taken the average in terms of F, delta F. I've taken the average duration of time uh, of the mistral event and I've taken the average period of the mistral event and, and that basically gives us this plot. Um, what we kind of notice here is that during uh, destratification, the, the approximated evection term is larger than during restratification. So it appears that evection is, it has a larger uh, influence in destratification than it does in restratification. When we actually uh, fit the model to uh, basically using, when we take the model and then we input the raw mistral events, uh, we get something that fits kind of close to the uh, control. Uh, when we add the seasonal, uh, the seasonal response. So on the bottom is just, the bottom plot just shows the uh, simplified model without the seasonal. And, the, and again, this is the Delta SI. So it's a difference between the control and the seasonal as uh, a control and the uh, total. And we find something that, that again, it, it kind of, it's, it's pretty similar. So more or less we're seeing that the pattern is uh, expressed with a simple model. There's a little bit of a, a deviance or deviation uh, during November time in 2012. Uh, and there's a little bit of a mess kind of post December, um, but for the most part, it follows the trend pretty well. It follows the destratification in terms of what we expect to be just influenced by the mistral pretty well. And so what we can do further is kind of play with this model. So it's an outfits a variable case and then assume that the mistral is periodic and more or less a, a consistent pulse function. Basically we're assuming that the duration, the period and the strength are all the same for each event. And then we can use a finite GMX series. Uh, when we plug that, those assumptions into the prior equation set and simplify into a nice term that basically allows us to kind of play around and see what portions of, uh, you know, is, is it the, what, what part, what variables influence the change in stratification more. 
And when we plot that basically constant periodic mistrust signal, uh, we can see that in the beginning, <clears throat> in the beginning on the bottom plot, uh, the initial mistrials have a large effect in terms of destratification. And then the subsequent mistrials uh, destratify less. And we can actually see this from the time derivative in the first equation, which solves for if we want uh, destratification and during a mistral event, we have to have uh, consecutive events be stronger than the current destratification. So basically what's happening with the constant, um, with the constant periodic system is that essentially uh, over each additional event, destratifies less and less because the stratification, the destratification or the stratification level is already lower. So there's, uh, it just needs to be more, has needs to be stronger in order to keep destratifying. And so what that hap what that means is that if you have a weak event, it actually may even aid in restratification and you may not see destratification at all during a weak event. But during a stronger event, we'll see a stronger destratification. The other thing to kind of pick out of this is that it kind of confirms a little bit of the preconditioning idea. If we look at how the delta SI changes, it, it decreases in the control, the black plot, uh, the black line, the bottom plot, the control decreases to December and then it increases a little bit, which is kind of just you know explained a little bit with what I was talking about with stronger events, uh, the subsequent events to be stronger to continue destratification. Uh, so essentially we do have a period in which the mistrials will destroy the vital water column. And then after they either just more or less keep it con constant in terms of destratification or they don't aid anymore basically. And so that essentially kind of more or less confirms the preconditioning idea. Um, but it also means that it doesn't necessarily require, that doesn't, it means that for deep convection to occur, it doesn't necessarily require a mutual event to trigger it. It can just be triggered by the seasonal uh, destratification that's just caused from the seasonal changes to essentially take that preconditioned destratification down to where the stratification index is zero. And then when that occurs, you don't need a, a mutual event. It's already zero just because the seasonal is taken down to basically to the point where it can just overturn naturally. Um, what else can I say real quick? Uh, I think that was the main part here. If I wanted to now pick apart this equation, the, const, uh, the periodic signal and see what terms basically influence these stratification the most, um, I can essentially look at how this equation changes as the events are uh, approach infinity. And by doing that, I get kind of a, a simpler equation, which I can pick apart and take the derivative of the partial derivative with respect to each individual little variable. And by doing that, uh, what we can see is that the strength has the biggest influence followed next by how much advection plays a role in the destratification phase. Uh, following after that, the other variables don't influence destratification as much. Uh, so that means that the duration of the event is not as, uh, does not influence it as much, nor does the period between events. And also, if we look at the very right tier, additional events uh, at well, event 16, which is how many events we have during the 2012, 2013 year, uh, additional events, uh, again, aid less. So that was kind of what I was doing. And that's more or less being summed up in, in an article that I'm, I'm still working on. Uh, but moving forward, what we're looking at next is essentially taking this simplified model and then looking at uh, also how the seasonal changes and the, and the mistral changes over, uh, over time. And so we've run 20 year long NEMO simulations, uh, which isn't obvious here. And that's why you have some 
breaking apart because you have some uh, deviation, basically a little bit of instability, I guess you could say. Uh, so there's, it's not a perfect continuous uh, set of lines. But basically we're gonna look at how the seasonal stratification changes over time and how the mistral influence changes over time to see uh, basically to, to, to investigate further what uh, causes deep convection or what may prevent con deep convection, uh, particularly if you look in a climatology, uh, climatological type of perspective. And yeah, that's uh, more or less it. So basically the key kind of ideas here are that uh, we can use stratification index to track the stratification of the water column. And when it's equal to zero, we have deep convection. But what's important is that the prior idea uh, that the mistral is the primary driver of deep convection isn't necessarily true. You need both the seasonal changes as well as the mistral to have a deep convection event. And changes in the seasonal conditions will change the initial stratification, which we're investigating with basically uh, the 20 year simulation I just showed and some future work. Uh, those that initial stratification determines how much uh, mistrals can essentially uh, what the mistral and the seasonal changes have to overcome to create deep, a deep convection. So if we have more stratification, we may see a lot less deep convection in the future if the Mediterranean has a destratification trend. Uh, another little point is that vection is larger during destratification, and I guess the most important point is that consecutive mistrals uh, have to be stronger in order to destratify further. And we kind of see that from the NEMO results as well as from our little simple model. And then a quick line of my references. So that's it, that's my presentation. Um, any questions, <laughs> comments? Thank you very much, Doug. Do you have questions? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the clapping. Uh, um, can you show uh, back? So uh, there, so there is this slide where you where you fit um, uh, the data to find this um, uh, relaxation time scale, essentially the alpha. And uh, I was wondering whether you. So because the fit, um, uh, it, is this the plot or? Uh, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, okay. thank you. Um, so the, the alpha you find here is uh, based on the curvature of the curve you show, uh, means the time scale is relatively, is quite longer than the time frame that, that you are considering here, right? Uh, alpha is relatively small, I guess, here. Yeah. It, it's yeah. not dimensional, uh, but um, so well, I was it's... wondering how, do you have an error bar on alpha or uh, can you accurately determine alpha on a relatively narrow time window compared to alpha itself and, and noisy data, which is what it is? Hmm. I haven't looked at the error bar, but uh, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I guess normally from a regression approach, you, you have some indicators of uh, of uh, of the quality of the fit, and which I'm not I, I'm not uh, very good at that, but uh, I'm pretty sure so, there's methods to get that. Yeah, so I I should investigate that more, um, more anecdotally. There was more noise in the during the restratification phase, mm -hmm. which is why you have we have less plots that I'm. Yeah, it's almost a straight there. line there. Yeah, and, uh, and and so yeah, the restratification phase was actually a lot noisier, and I had I, I basically couldn't use some stuff because it would either uh, something maybe another driver that was not clear. Uh, was changing basically the slope or just uh, well, the strength of advection is less so it's more or less hidden among other uh, terms. On the, in, on the strat de phase on the left side, 
almost all the mistral cases were used because they all uh, destratified in in the period of which I was looking at. Now, if I mm -hmm. looked at, um, is it this plot? Let's see here. If I looked at the red, oops, too far. Is it gonna? Here we go. Uh, if I looked at the mistrals with the red bar, well, afterwards, particularly after deep convection, you can see a lot of them um, have a, an upward trend. They're not destratifying. Uh, and especially during the portion uh, where we have the minimum on the bottom plot of the delta SI, all the green uh, past that minimum are all more or less a, a restratifying mistral event. So I, those ones, I've, I've more or less ignored those when I determined the value of, of the restoration coefficient. Um, if I include those, there'd be a lot more noise and it, the, the model probably wouldn't fit as well. Uh, okay, yeah. And I had a question more uh, on the, the, the physical story that you tell afterwards. So you consider uh, like a sequence of, um, wh when you, you consider the periodic mistral events, so, so what you have is you have a repetition of mistral events, right? That's the idea? Yes. Uh, maybe you can show the, the, the slide again. I think that's two, three slides after this one. Yeah, let me... Uh... So if I, if I got the idea is you have this uh, time scale. So the, the mistral has um, some effect on uh, stratification, but then because of this decay time scale, this, uh, this uh, effect... Uh, fades out, right? So yeah. is the story that if the you have a repetition of mistral events at a high enough rate, then you will have an accumulation of the effects of individual events? Is that what, uh, what is happening or um, more complicated uh, than that? So if I have, if I have more events, it uh, if I understand properly, uh, if I have more events, if I, basically if I have increased the frequency, uh -huh. it doesn't necessarily, it it does influence the destratification. It does create more destratification. Uh, however, it's very, a very small difference. I didn't show the plot here. I didn't, uh, I have a plot that shows it, but I kind of wanted to work on it to make it more apparent. Uh, apparent. Um, but let's see here. There, you can see in there's that one term here that has the the delta tau, which is essentially the frequency. Uh -huh. And so there is the influence if we change the frequency, um, and with more events because we have on the top portion here in the middle of the equation set we have the number of events k. And so yeah, increasing the events and increasing the, the basically the period, uh, increasing the sorry, increasing the frequency. Of the mistral does cause to be more destratification. However, there's there's a limit to how much that creates, um, because uh, the most if you have this a constant mistral event, this is like one big constant mistral event, it'll destratify. But as we can, if we look at this bottom plot, you can see that consecutive events have a of a, a less steep slope during the events. So essentially, over time, if you have constant, it just stops destratifying further. Even if you had like just one constant event, which is infinite frequency. Okay. Is that more or less the question you're asking? Yeah, yeah. I think there are still things I'm not getting, but that's not. That, that's fine. I uh, yeah, maybe I can. I I want to clear my. Uh, my plots a little more on the other stuff and no, I think with those very we're nice no, very nice uh, plots and everything uh, I think the presentation was uh, very fine oh, thanks I have thanks. Uh, <laughs> questions on uh, modeling okay uh, presentation the um, <clears throat> in Nemo uh, as far as I know you have three kind, kinds of parameterization of convection there's the convective adjustments uh, diffusion and the uh, uh, what's um, 
Yeah, turbulent closure. Hmm. How, how you know which one you're using and do you know if this impacts your results? And uh, do you think those parametrization are satisfying? Because for instance, uh, some 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 groups to work on stochastic parametrizations, for instance, to to try to better represent the the fast uh, impact of uh, yeah of wind. So that could be something interesting to explore as well. Hmm. Uh, yeah, actually, so I I don't remember offhand which scheme I'm using for deep convection. Um which is not good, <laughs> it probably should. If I remember right though, in this configuration, I think it uses a diffusion more pro like process. I can't remember, I, I did remember reading a paper that, that said that uh, more or less they found that the convection um, scheme for Nemo Med 12, I think, was uh, a little, uh, it, I think it under, estimated convection mm -hmm. <clears throat> so and that yeah so that's kind of the the portion i'm going to move forward and hopefully with uh, guillaume glendale and uh, luel is actually look at a an ideal simulation uh, of just the convection part to see if uh, partially this made a simple model holds as well as as look at um maybe more accurate view of that deep convection uh just because the, the parameterization i think is a little uh, what i read was a little under valuing the the convection okay um, if if i may mm -hmm. i had a related question but going the other way um <laughs> as much of your results rely on modeling mm -hmm. how much do you know of the reliability the realism of the modeling, especially for the all the parameterized processes like the fluxes at the surface and the deep convection, and what observational links, what observations would we have to tie deep convection to Mistral or to know how much we can trust Nemo for the description of deep convection at that resolution? Okay, so yeah, uh, we have uh, so. 20, so the year I'm looking at is 2012 to the winter 2012 to 2013. And there's a uh, large availability of, of data for that year because there's a lot of uh, a lot of different instruments that were used. Uh, I think different, I think there's a, there's at least one or two voyages, I think. Uh, I think they may have captured some during deep convection too in February. So there's, there's quite a bit of data. And I think one of the ones I'm gonna look at is some buoy data for, for wind. And uh, there's some, the name escapes me, but uh, current measuring devices on a string <laughs> that I can't think of the name, but floaters, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of data for, in terms of floaters available that I'm gonna be uh, using to kind of just more confirm the NEMO data in here. And also the NEMO, uh, the NEMO simulation is initialized with the observational data. Um, and for the 20 year, um, so to, to complete basically the 2012 yeah. year is, is based on the IMAX experiment that was conducted in the Gulf of Lyon. So the initial state of the simulation is uh, an objective analysis with uh, constructed with observation during the SOAP, SOAP experiment well, in the IMEX, IMEX campaign. So we have a lot of data and boy for this period actually to uh, to be confident on the on the model. Thanks, Omar. <laughs> and, and to come back to the convection, I think there's a so there, there are two things. There is convection in the sense of uh, turbulence and uh, diffusion and so on. And there is deep convection. So there is no parametrization of deep convection in the model. That's not the same thing. Deep convection is the, the, a mixing of the water column from the surface to the bottom. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, a longer time scale. Uh, 
uh, than the turbulent mixing. I don't really know for sure. I, I, I still have to look and, and confirm what closure methods are being used in the config. Do you know offhand, uh, Loma? No, right now I don't know. We need to check. Okay. The, the stratification index, the way it's calculated, emphasizes the whole column. Mm -hmm. And so, um, given it's, it has a crucial role in your analysis, it would be, it, if you have observations that um, confirm the behavior of the model regarding the whole column, that will certainly strengthen you conf the confidence you may have in the model simulation of the deep convection. But thanks for pointing out that that part is not parameterized. Oh, what about the, because if I understand you have uh, three different things, is the mixed layer and, and the mixed layer depth that that is, I guess will play a role as well, but is, is not necessarily related to convection. You can, it's turbulent mixing. And then there's convection, which has to be parameterized in, in levels of this resolution as far as I, I understand. And, and you see that deep convection is something different from, from convection and you don't need to parameterize it, even though it's like a, and in a quick and intense uh, ah, so event. That's it's uh, quick is a relative term, I guess. It's it's it still occurs over a few days, like okay. it's. Uh, so you don't need to parameterize it. No, it's uh, I can't. I'm failing. I I did at one point read the dynamic solver for Nemo. Uh, Okay. But I can't fly with me. That would handle that, I think. Yeah. And the um, so, so you say that means you talked about preconditioning and Mistral uh, and the impact of Mistral on deep convection. Uh, are you also interested in? Uh, uh, I guess Mistral will have an effect on the mean state of the ocean and, in particular, in the depth of the mixed layer. Mm -hmm. And. Um, is it some? Uh, do you see a difference in the mean state of this at the surface of the the ocean uh, when you have the filtered version and the unfiltered version? And is there something to learn there? Because mixed layer depth, for instance, it's in, important to know the the temperature at the surface, the exchange of nutrients for the plankton, etc. Yeah. So uh, I mean, the mean state is more or less represented in the, uh, in the, in this plot, the blue lines, it's the, the seasonal portion. It's well, so the mean state, I guess, is a little bit represented by a stratification index because in the way I'm looking at it, it's the average over the entire column uh, density gradient. Yeah, but the, the mean state- I, uh, Maybe the I don't- The forcing may be different from uh, the mean state in the unfiltered case, because you have nonlinear processes and you may end up in your simulation with, in the filtered case, for instance, with a mixed layer that will be shallower than uh, in the unfiltered case. You see what I mean? Yeah, uh, yes, it can, that, that is possible. And that's actually, uh, um, uh, so yeah, so it, uh, I had it, now I'm gone. But yeah, it, it's it's you can have variance on both sides in terms of for my filtering, I've just taken the mean, the moving mean um, of the atmospheric data. So I, mm -hmm. it's the 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 filtered is just the mean. Yeah, but I'm talking about the uh, the ocean response here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. My brain was thinking at the same time, uh, but it failed. So basically, it can be. I mean, look here uh, at this plot. There's a there's four red circles, and the second red circle from the left, mm -hmm. you can see that 
uh, we actually you have a, a weird bump in the blue line, the seasonal, the, the filtered forcing line, um, which you don't see in the unfiltered. So, yeah, there's uh, uh, I guess there's there's some there's I mean, I guess sorry, I uh, you mind saying your question again? I apologize. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just curiosity because it's it, it's more related to to what happens at the surface than, mm. than the convection. But it was uh, I was interested in learning more about uh, the impact of the mistral, not only on the deep convection, ah. but also on the mixed layer uh, ah. and on uh, the the mean response of the ocean. Okay, so for it's it's okay. It's not, there's no no problem. Okay, I, I I understand a little better now. I can answer on the the mixed layer depth. So the mixed layer depth uh, varies very slowly. Uh, so you'll you'll see it kind of increase with Mistral uh, in the control simulation, the unfiltered, uh, a little bit. But all it also just kind of gradually grows until you get to deep convection, where it just grows to the bottom. Um. But it's not the the signal, I guess, of the Mistral and the mixed layer depth from what I remember seeing wasn't as strong as it is in the stratification index. And then with the unfiltered, uh, the mixed layer depth is 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 never very large. It's uh, it stays quite small even during deep convection. It grows during deep convection period that we uh, if there's deep convection in the control, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it still stays only like a few hundred meters compared to the depth of about 2000. You were talking about the filtered version last? No. Yes, yeah. So the filtered version stays quite small in mixed layer. Mm. Yeah, okay. Um. Are there any more questions? Uh, yes. Um, um, Doug, can, can you, uh, I didn't get it uh, clearly. So you are looking at the point, point just at the point uh, wise at the 42 five east, or you uh, anti you are doing an average over the box you showed at the beginning. Uh, so neither technically yes the first one. Um, so this is 42 five, but it's an average of the points immediately adjacent of 42 five. Uh, it's, so it's averages over home. about um, about one is it like uh, a few kilometers basically maybe a, a kilometer square kilometer like a there's I think it's about nine points in total that are averaged around the 4825 to uh, as what I'm taking as the information the variables from 4825 does that make sense Okay, and uh, when you compare your uh, zero D model with uh, the observe with the data, uh, can mm -hmm. you show us the plot? Uh... Let's see if I no come back here. That's the uh, this one should be it. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So I didn't understand clearly. Um, uh, so at each time you compute the the duration of the the event uh, to how how do you compute your zero D model in that case? So okay, so I I kind of missed a part I meant to mention earlier. Uh, so for the duration of the Mistral events and where I'm getting the information about the duration and period of the Mistral events uh, from basically uh, I think it's uh, Jan and, and Antoine's kind of modeling of wharf uh, coupled orchidee run that I'm taking the wind data from that and what I'm doing is I'm look I'm basically taking the Mistral event as a as a the, the the occurrence of certain conditions basically threshold so I uh, for a Mistral event in the Gulf of the Lion I assume that well, I, I asked that there be more than like two meters per second wind speed, northerly flow, and also have a uh, Ganoa low uh, present 
And that's how I'm getting the Mistral data is from events that uh, days that uh, fit that criteria. And then uh, the days that do fit the criteria are the Mistral events. And then, uh, then I have, you know, the period and the, the duration. And so, and also the heat flux. So not the heat flux. The heat flux part is actually calculated uh, based on the restoration coefficients I calculate before. So basically I, I calculate the restoration coefficients. I have the delta T and delta tau per event. And if I go back to the model itself, uh, that those are kind of all the variables. And then I can solve for the uh, strength of Mistral. And then uh, from like- How do yeah. you choose your amplitude of the, on the heat flux? Uh, so that, that is, um, I'm basically solving that using a simple model if I equate it to the NEMO model. So in a sense, it makes sense that fits it because. So you uh, use the value of the NEMO model at the, the same time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm taking, I'm taking the NEMO model uh, to determine the strength of the Mistral. Okay, so so you have uh, new zero D model. Um, so you have two effects: one due to the heat forcing, and the other one, which uh, where, where you say that it is a advection term. But uh, as Alexi uh, talked a little bit before, maybe you can think about um, the effect of the mechanical wind forcing which uh, depends your mix layer. And so you, you mix uh, uh, the surface water with, um, with uh, deeper layers. Uh, mm. Ah, so, okay, I understand. So basically uh, a shear induced turbulent mixing. Yes, because what uh, I'm thinking about the what occurs on the, if you, should, if you are working with uh, uh, an, or on an area, you have uh, horizontal advection too in, this, mm -hmm. in the equation and you say you, you don't take into, into account. So your restoration term for me, it's just uh, the mixing by the, by the wind, in fact. Well, hmm. Uh, so if I understand correctly, so what I'm doing is I'm still, uh, set, well, the restoration term is representing the horizontal evection terms. Yeah, uh, because I'm taking the average over the water column for the boon weissel frequency, I'm, I don't have any vertical mixing terms anymore that can be represented. Yeah, but when you do the average, you make, you you average water with different values, with different temperatures. So true. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a very and, uh, simple actually, model. Actually, you have the mix you the mix layer uh, depth change as well. So mm. so if you think about the 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 wind, it will uh, depends the mix layer. So you will have, uh, uh, I think you will have colder water too. Yeah, uh, from, yeah. So my model just, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, well, because it's, it's just temperature. Um, it doesn't include the mechanical forcing at all, uh, unless it's in the advection term, just because of the movement. Um, so yeah, essentially that, that to look, uh, well, that's actually kind of what I've hoped to work with you, you all on <laughs> is to look at, at more in depth, like and kind of investigate, uh, with a more accurate model where we can still see the different evection terms in terms of the mixing and include a mechanical forcing as well. Uh, cause this is just mainly heating. There's no, you know, this is primarily dependent on the, the atmospheric heating. Uh, cooling. Okay. Good. Um...
Thank you, Doug.